Hey everybody, thanks for joining me again today. Today we're going to talk a little bit more about air conditioning. We started talking a little bit about it, how to fix a couple things, but today I want to explain how the whole system works, which can go a long ways towards uh, troubleshooting it and figuring out what needs to be fixed. It really helps to understand how everything works. The truck air conditioning system works just the same as a car, just bigger. It's a bigger system and air conditioning is a, is a closed system from, from atmospheric moisture and uh, anything outside. It's, it, nothing should come in, nothing should go out. It should just maintain the level of refrigerant that's in it. If you get a leak, it'll escape. It also at a certain point can start drawing moisture in and we don't want that. So it's important for the system to stay sealed. And it's kind of separate from your engine. The only place it really engages your engine is at the drive belt here. Other than that, if you are, are working on it, you're not really gonna mess up anything with your engine, not gonna have any problems. But one important thing to note when you're doing air conditioning, always wear safety glasses because getting refrigerant in your eyes can make you go blind. So we'll start here with what happens when you turn your air conditioning system on. I think also it helps to think of this as a big heat pump or a big heat exchanger, not something that manufactures cold. It uses the energy in the refrigerant by changing the pressure and expansion and contraction to make cold, okay? So just kind of think of it that way. Now, when you turn your switch on on your dash, it sends a signal up here to your compressor. And then your compressor will say, it will, it will sense high pressure. If, it, if you've got good pressure, it'll start the system. It'll, it'll engage this clutch to the compressor, which will drive the compressor. If you don't have pressure, if you have low pressure or your system is empty, it will not engage this clutch. Oh, along the way to here too, we'll talk about some little things that can go on that uh, to look for when you're looking for problems. Just basic things, we're not gonna get too far in depth on that. So, when it, when it wants to engage, it'll engage this clutch to the compressor, which will drive the compressor and send high pressure gas up here into the condenser. And the, the, the refrigerant will enter the condenser as a high pressure gas and your, fa your fan and airflow from the outside will draw air through that condenser and start to cool it down. And it will leave the condenser as a high pressure liquid. So it's important to keep this condenser up here clean and in good shape. You don't want any damage to it. You don't want a bunch of bent fins and you want to keep it clean so that you can get maximum airflow through there and that will help your air conditioning. Now, just a couple things that can go wrong here at the start. Uh, the electrical line coming into the compressor, I've had those go bad. And that's one of those boogeymen that it can take a while to find. Uh, but I've had that go bad. These clutches can lock up. Uh, what will happen is when it's not engaged, it will spin freely with the engine. When it's engaged, it'll engage with the compressor. Well, if it's locked up, if that clutch is locked up, the pulley won't spin and you'll smoke that belt off. You'll lose a belt. You'll probably smell something burning. At that point, it's time to rebuild the, the compressor clutch, which isn't too bad of a job. Uh, and it's not all that expensive. But you kind of got to measure it out, how old your compressor is. If you got a 10 year old compressor, I wouldn't really be looking to rebuild the clutch. I'd probably just put a new compressor on. And if you look around, you can find these compressors pretty reasonable. Now when the, when the refrigerant leaves the condenser, it comes out as a high pressure liquid. It goes in as a gas, comes out as a liquid. And you can follow your lines here to see the path of everything. Every truck's gonna be a little bit different setup. Same concept. So then it's gonna come out this line here in the bottom. Then it's gonna to go to a receiver dryer which the receiver dryer, it traps contaminants and it will help remove moisture from the lines. You don't want moisture in your lines that can cause component failure. And if you ever have your system open for a repair, say you gotta replace a condenser, what have you, you should always replace that receiver dryer. Once it's exposed to atmospheric moisture and stuff like that, you wanna change it, because then it won't be doing its job properly. And you're gonna have a couple switches. You're gonna have a high pressure switch and a low pressure switch. We've been over that in a previous video on trouble, troubleshooting your fan. So I won't go too deep, too deep into that. Now it's gonna exit the receiver dryer and it's gonna come up here. And this is the point where it's gonna go into, mostly today we're gonna to talk about expansion valves, but it'll either go to a, well first, it'll come to a block here where it can split between going to your cab and going to your bunk. Now we're just gonna talk about what happens in the cab 
because what happens in your cab is just going to kind of be duplicated back in the bunk to make cold back there. So it'll come out of this block here and then you'll go either to an expansion valve or an orifice tube. We'll mostly talk about expansion valves today. You'll get to the expansion valve. Well, first what they do, we'll talk about orifice tube. Orifice tube has a little hole in it that never changes size, it's not adjustable. And the refrigerant passes through it, it expands, and the way the flow is, is uh, regulated through it is your high pressure switch will engage or disengage the compressor to make whatever flow you need. With the expansion valve, there's a diaphragm inside of it that will adjust based on demand. So it can, it can allow more or less refrigerant through it. When the refrigerant goes through the expansion valve, it expands rapidly. It goes through a small hole and on the other side, it expands rapidly into a low pressure gas. So it will go again from a liquid into a gas and that rapid expansion, that's, that's what causes the cold, okay? It's, it's exchanging energy. Now, once it goes through the expansion valve, expands, gets cold, it's gonna go through an evaporator, which is just like a smaller version of what your condenser looks like. It's small, it has fins on it. It goes through the evaporator and a fan is gonna blow air over that evaporator. And that's where the cold air comes from for your vents, is that fan blowing air over the evaporator gives you the cold air in your cab and back in your sleeper. Now, right next to the evaporator, you'll have a little sensor, uh, evaporator temp sensor. That is what can measure, say your evaporator is freezing up and it needs to uh, thaw some of that ice off of there. It's, you'll see water dripping, stuff like that. Uh, it's just a tiny little sensor that senses your evaporator temperature. On the other side of the evaporator, where the, where the cold air is coming and going to your vents, there will be a uh, discharge temp sensor, which measures the temperature of the air discharging out from the evaporator and going up to your cab. Now once the, the refrigerant leaves the evaporator, it comes out and it goes right back to your compressor. And, this, and the cycle starts all over again. Now if you have an orifice tube, instead of an expansion valve, you will not have a receiver dryer. The receiver dryer is on the high pressure side. If you have an orifice tube, you will have what's called an accumulator on the low pressure side going back to the compressor. It looks similar to the receiver dryer. It's kind of like a canister looking thing. But if you have one of those, uh, that goes with an orifice tube. So that's how your air conditioning works. Works that way in a car or a truck. That's just kind of the basics of it. There's a little bit of electronics involved in your, in your controller. But this is just the flow of the refrigerant, how it makes the cold. So if you have a problem with a component, you know what it does it can lead to how to fix it. Now in regards to some, some problems, you can have with that expansion valve. We talked about that in a previous video too. Those things can get debris in them or they can, they can kind of clog up or seize up so they don't adjust. That can cause some different problems. Um, if you have a leak in the system and you've checked everything and you just can't find it, you've used UV dye, everything, most likely it's in your evaporator. And those can be a bear to get out. Some of them like on the Kenworth, there's a box up here. You can remove them from the outside. That's really nice. This one, you kind of got to tear into the dash to get that evaporator out. It's, uh, it's not a difficult job, but it can take a lot of time. And then also too, to help your air keep, keep a good temperature and, and good airflow, keep a nice clean cabin air filter in there for it so it can breathe. One thing that gets really overlooked are these two sensors I talked about in the dash is the evaporator temp sensor and especially that discharge air temperature sensor. I took a look at mine when I rebuilt this system and it's, it's got a little board on it, electronic type board. And the thing was just all corroded. So I've, they kind of get overlooked when you take these into a shop and get them worked on. It was like $30. It's real simple to change. You just pop it in, pop it out. So keep an eye on that because if you're not getting the right temperature you think you should have, if that sensor isn't reading right, well, it's tearing, telling your air conditioner, oh, it's plenty cold in here. You don't need to make any more cold when in fact it's not cold enough. It's just the sensor isn't, isn't quite reading it right. So keep an eye on that. So I hope that helped go a long ways towards uh, understanding how your air conditioning works. And uh, stay tuned for more videos. Hit that like button, subscribe, and we'll see you next time.